Welcome to Embroidery Nurse. I had a um, issue. I had someone drop off six shirts that they wanted to be monogrammed for their upcoming wedding. Um, more than likely, they're going to have these on like when they get their hair fixed. Well, I, out of the millions of things that I embroidered, I don't know why I've never embroidered a shirt like this and didn't realize how much stabilization it was going to actually need. This was my first one that I did, and I was devastated. I couldn't believe how ridiculous it looked. The puckering, just un, just ridiculous. I actually even had to um, pull the stitches out. If you look really close, you can see the, the puncture marks from the needle. Um, I knew that th I was going to have to replace this shirt immediately, so I knew I already was at a loss with this. Um, luckily, this was a shirt I was able to put in the name, um, and the size and I found it on Amazon because this basically um, probably is the flower girl shirt and um, this is just basically like a school uniform type um, shirt but it's really thin and I just wasn't prepared for how much puckering it was going to actually show so when I did this I posted it on one of my embroidery sites that on Facebook and I got 10 million messages saying how hard these kind of shirts are to embroider people gave me so many different ideas saying it was the um, fonts fault it was the stabilization's fault it was the machine's fault it was the needle's fault and so I took a lot of those things with a grain of salt and there were several people that were like yep don't do those they're the devil so I kind of took it on as a challenge um, I knew that this um, particular customer one of these um, and one of them exactly the way she gave me um, with the the this style monogram and um, so I wanted to make it right for her. So luckily, this was a, a good example that I'm able to toss. And uh, my customer, unless she watches this, and that's absolutely fine if she does, um, won't know the difference because luckily I was able to find an exact replacement. And um, it came in the mail today from Amazon. So yay for that. I'll be able to fix it. And now um, I'll, I've been able to do a couple of these the right way. And so I just wanted to show you what I've learned just by trial and error. I figure if I've made this mistake, maybe I could save you from making it. Um, what I did is um, on this round, I decided to use the fusible no-show poly mesh. So I get this from my um, embroidery shop um, here in town. And so they package it themselves. So it's probably going to look a little different if you buy the one at yours. But this is a fusible um, no-show translucent mesh lightweight cutaway with a low melt adhesive on one side. Um, so what I did is I cut it to the size um, of the um, monogram. And not only did I do one piece, I did two. So what I did, let me show you. Um, I basically cut to size the exact piece that I wanted to do and um, ironed it on. And then with the second piece, what I did is to create more stabilization, I actually turned the second piece, whoop, sorry, on an angle. So I turned this one this way, and then I just cut off the edges so it could still be a square in the end when I was done. So that's double pieces of the fusible poly mesh because obviously this needs serious stabilization. So not only am I using these two pieces, then what I've decided to do, sorry I keep hitting the camera, making you a little queasy there, is now I'm taking this that's been ironed on and I'm using two more pieces of stabilization. I, I know this is a lot, but man, if you saw the first two that I did, you'll realize that this particular item is going to require a lot more stabilization than you think. And I want it to be perfect. So if it means I'm using five pieces of stabilization, then so be it. I'm using a tearaway, but I'm also using my regular, fusible, or regular just um, no-show poly mesh on top. Um, because obviously this is going to be pulled away. This is going to stay on the back so that when they go to iron this after their event, it will still look nice. Um, I, I don't hoop a lot. I mainly um, like to pin and float things, but this, again, item is kind of special, so I'm hooping it. So I'm using my spray, just a little touch of spray, not much. It doesn't need much since I'm hooping it. And I'm going to place my item directly on here. And the way I've always worked, and I know people say it's one more step that's not necessary, but I print out every design I do. Um, 
it's a very inexpensive way for me to make sure things are lined up exactly how I want them to be. So um, if, if it takes me a few more minutes to do an item, but I know it's going to be perfect the first time, then I'm happy with that. So basically then I'm just going to make sure that it's lined up this way so it will be easy to center on the machine when I get it there, get that collar out. Um, this is probably a little tight for I'm going to loosen the screw here. I'm just so not used to hooping things. I'm so used to just pinning that that's a little more effort for me. So before I actually, there we go. That looks good. Just pull it a little bit. Not enough to stretch it or anything, but and that's not stretchable fabric, so I'm not really concerned with that. Put a little pressure on that um, spray adhesive. Make sure everything looks good in that regards. And then I'm just going to tighten my hoop. And I'm going to show you my finished results. So um, remember I showed you the one, how messed up it actually was without proper stabilization on this fabric. How much puckering it had, you know, really how ridiculous and embarrassing that looked. And then doing one the proper way, I haven't pulled up all the stabilization. Look how amazing that is. I mean, what a humongous difference and how perfect. There isn't a single pucker around this entire monogram. So I need to clean it up. I need to cut out, cut all this away and pull my tear away off um, and just be proud of, of what I've done. So again, um, double layers, double layers of feasible poly mesh, one layer of regular poly mesh, one layer of tear away just to top it all off and then on these again I don't use this a lot especially when it's a um, flat non porous item um, just to cover all my basis when I put it on the machine I'm gonna throw a piece of water soluble stabilizer on the top so yes there are five count them five pieces of stabilization on this shirt but I'm gonna have one happy bride in the end and then I'll feel confident and proud of the work that I've done when she comes to pick it up. So hopefully that helps you feel comfortable um, when you're doing shirts like these. Um, and just know that you'll be proud of, of the work that you're sending out. Um, that's important to me. I'm not going to send anything to my customers that I'm not proud of. Um, and that I'm going to feel confident that they're going to love in the end. So hope this helps me showing my mistake. Um, and, and just also loving on Amazon for finding the item that I needed to replace it with. Um, hope y'all have a good day and enjoy embroidering.